Good morning guys, welcome back to Jungle, back to another video. In today's video, we are pretty much, uh, unfortunately, um, uh, yeah, doing something uh, that I didn't really want to do. So from the title of this video, you guys can see that unfortunately, we're not keeping the BMW i3. So I'm going to go ahead and just pop up something right here. I'm going to be as straightforward as possible on this video. I'm going to show you guys the full process to how you guys actually get out of a situation like I'm currently in. Um, and yeah, so I'm going to pop up the full parts list over here. And basically, after buying the car, after fees, and after um, me already buying parts for the vehicle already for the i3, I'm already about into it about $15,000. That's before registration, that's before taxes, um, and that's before the rest of the parts to get it, the rest of it fixed. Mind you guys, this car is still a new car. So um, for some of these prices, you guys see towards the bottom, the $10,000 in parts, this car still needs. It doesn't look like it needs that much, but considering that this has an aluminum frame and considering that I have to actually buy the parts from BMW because first off, it's a Rex model. Second off, it's a 2019. Very, very hard to find used part out cars for a 2019. All these parts, unfortunately, I have to get them from BMW. Now, these are BMWs with their discounts. Um, so these aren't the prices you guys would normally see. These are with the discounts. I went to my friends. I got wholesale uh, prices on these. So that's on top of already getting all that stuff discounted. Um, the only thing could probably luck out on is probably a steering rack. The steering rack, I put it as 2200 because that's the cheapest thing I could find. Um, no one on eBay is selling a 2019 steering rack. Apparently, they're different for 2018 and 2016 and then from 2014 to 2015. It's just going to cost too much money for what I wanted it to be. I wanted something that's cheap. I wanted something that I could daily, but ended up, I don't want to spend $25,000 and that's before, you know, fixing all the little things and paint polishing and all that stuff and paying the taxes and registration. We're looking probably near around 27 to 28 thousand dollars to drive this i3 and end of the day i can just go straight to the dealer and just get an older one yeah not as much range but i can get an older one a rex probably like 15 or 16 thousand dollars clean title so um to me it just doesn't really seem uh you know a smart move to do we got the car running we got a lot of it assembled but i think we should hold off for the frame stuff i think it should be for somebody else um, to take care of to save the rest of this BMW. I think we saved it to the point to where at least now it's drivable and somebody else that would get it from auction is gonna wanna at least buy it to fix it um, because the way I got it, it wasn't driving, all the airbags are deployed, it, 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 it was smashed really badly. At least we cleared up everything and we got it pretty much a little bit better for the next person. Now, unfortunately, I, I don't really like to say this kind of stuff. I mean, it's kind of like the M5 situation. Um, you never wanna get into a build as much as I do this for my, you know, for, for YouTube and I enjoy it, I don't wanna get myself in a financial pickle it just it's not worth it um now for content absolutely sometimes it is worth it getting a little bit into like like for example like the 7 series i, I bought it i dumped more money than it was worth but at the end of the day we completed that thing and it was an amazing car and i loved it and i experienced it and then eventually i started to hate it and then i sold it and then went through depression anyway long story short uh, for some builds it is worth going deeper in more than it's worth but going twice as much of like honestly than it's worth how much I paid for it, I don't think that's worth it. If I had another parts car to buy another parts car, it's another $15,000 and it needs $15,000 in total on repairs. It's just not worth it to be honest. So that being said, for those of you guys who are still here listening to me uh, ramble, I'm going to be showing you guys how you actually take your cars to Copart. Now there's actually two ways to doing it. The one, this i3, I actually bought it through a broker. So when you buy it through a broker, you don't get the license, you don't get the title until you finish and register the vehicle. So now since I don't actually have it registered, I'm actually gonna have to send it back through my broker back to the auction and then re get reimbursed as much as I could possibly get for this car. Now mind you guys, I am in about $15,000. Will I get $15,000 back? I doubt it, but I honestly don't really, um, I, I don't have high hopes, mainly because um, you guys saw the way we assembled the car. I left the front end exposed. I left the frame damage exposed. That's something I didn't see when I bid my absolute max. Um, and the frame damage is something that I don't wanna cover and I could just slap a bumper on there and some poor guy is going to go ahead and bid on it it's a run and drive um, most of the airbags are looking good the whole body will be all together if i throw on the front bumper but i just think that's morally wrong i don't want to screw over the next person i got screwed over but i don't want to screw over the next person so i'm going to go and leave the bumper off people that want to come see the car see the damages and see if that's something they want to deal with so end of the day if i just get out with ten thousand twelve thousand or something like that i'm going to be happy at least i got my money i got out of this project i don't have to dump fifteen thousand to get this thing ultimately fixed so yeah that's what i'm doing i'm sending it through pretty much 
much the auction process through my broker because I don't have a title. Now, if you guys do have a title, that changes everything. Now, you guys can obviously sell it locally, which is probably an option. I mean, a lot of people like to buy Revo projects through local marketplaces, so that's definitely an option. Or what you guys can do is actually go on Copart and do the trade-in program. They actually trade in cars and they offer pretty decent money. For example, like the M5 that I had, since it was a clean title, I actually got an offer that was more than pretty much everyone that was offering me uh, on OfferUp and Facebook. I put it up on Offer Facebook. I wanted 7,000 and no one was gonna give it to me. So uh, Copart ended up offering me around $7,000. I think it was six or $7,000, exactly what I wanted, exactly what I was into the car. Um, so that worked out for me and it could work out for some of you guys as well. So yeah guys, we are sitting right here in my office. You have the i3 just chilling. As you guys can see, it could definitely drive on a trailer. It could definitely drive back on the lot and we could possibly, possibly get Copart to list this car as a run and drive. That would be ideal. We obviously do want as much money back as possible. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and take you guys on the journey. We're gonna go ahead, head down to Copart, drop off this vehicle. Actually, I'm ordering a tow, guys. So um, uh, here's another step for you guys. If you guys have gone through a broker, if you guys want me to actually show you guys how to get a broker, how you actually bid on cars in Copart, make sure you let me know down below. I can make a whole video on that, how to actually get reliable brokers and how to go through Copart, um, how to actually get the car, how to deliver the car. If you guys want that whole process, let me know down below. But this is actually showing you guys how you drop it off, assuming that you guys already bought a car and you want to send it back to Copart. So, so first things first, before we actually get the car towed there, um, we need to ask, we need to tell the broker that we're sending the car back. Once you actually tell the broker we're sending the car back, he's gonna go ahead and get a lot number and get the car in the basically the lot. And once you actually get in the lot, you need to get the title. So I need to go pick up the title from the broker and then actually get a tow truck driver to tow the car to the Copart, give Copart the title, give Copart the car, and they can actually put it up in auction. It should only take like three days for them to actually get it listed up, but it should be on Copart as upcoming lot. So anywho, guys, first things first, I'm gonna go ahead and call my broker and get this thing set up. Yes, yes, I'm calling you back again. I want the car sent back to Copart. I don't think, I don't think it's the move for us, unfortunately. Um, so how do we go about doing that? Muffin, get off the camera. <laughs> Okay, all right, thank you, thank you, I appreciate it. Um, all right, I'm gonna, go ahead and get the, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and come pick up the title. So now that we have it scheduled for drop off, we need to go get the title from the broker so we can actually give it to Copart. Now the broker can mail the title to Copart directly, but I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, Muffin, don't drop my camera, don't drop my camera, please stop. <laughs> She's right behind you guys, about to knock over the camera. But yeah, as I was saying, if the broker can't give you the title, he can mail them the title and you just have to go to Copart, but since we can get the title, um, let's go get that title. Guys, just got the salvage certificate here, which is a good sign because he said he just got the title in today this morning by FedEx. And I was like, oh my God. Cause I mean, I think UPS actually, uh, because we've actually had the car for about two weeks now or a week now, I think two weeks now. And um, not she, I think it was three weeks. And the odds that it just showed up this morning was perfect timing. Cause I, I just needed it this morning. I wasn't asking for it sooner. I needed it today. And thankfully it came in today. So God bless. So the next step is to get a burrito because uh, you just you just have to. I mean, you're gonna have to enjoy a nice looking burrito um, before you take your precious car back to Copart. Guys, if you're ever in North Highlands, you guys have to give them a try. Their burritos are so good. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> hey, make sure you follow me on <laughs> <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> guys we got the food right after this we'll get the i3 towed but um yeah i mean we had to do this burrito <laughs> that looks so good i need tacos next time fire bro tacos get a little wrong. close up on this mm, this <laughs> juice <laughs> it's a promotion <laughs> bro, i showed the truck as well bro we're doing a full-on promotion great Nah, very chill. Guys, we are officially back home. Title's in the car. I just gotta get the money, disconnect the, the jumper cables, and we should be ready to go. The tow truck driver's gonna be here any minute now to pick up the car, and we are heading down to Copart to drop her off. Guys, just got the car loaded up. Let's head out. So I found this guy on Craigslist, guys, and he's actually really, really, really chill. He told me that uh, Copar people actually take parts out of the trunk um, when they see cars at the auction, and if they have that car and they want the parts, they'll just take it right out of the trunk. So he did tell me to take pictures, which I did. I've never actually sold to Copart, so uh, shout out to him for giving me a tip. If you guys ever sell your cars to Copart and you have parts that are loose, uh, make sure to take pictures of it because some people that work there apparently will take the parts out of it. So uh, obviously that's not for everyone, but uh, you know, better safe than sorry.
So at this point, uh, the tow guy actually told me because he's done this a few times, guys. We're gonna go inside a Copar right now and get a uh, sticker to put on the car, and then actually one of those like domino sticks to put on the top, so the tow, the the, the forklift knows uh, which car this is and who it belongs to. So uh, yeah, let's go ahead and head into Copar. All right, guys, they just came out. They told me to throw the sticker on there. Let me show you guys what I did. I also moved the car over here, so it'll be easier for them to forklift it up. Now it is a running drive, and I can also drive it in there. But since it has a flat tire, I don't want to damage anything. So uh, yeah, they gave me the sticker. I slapped on the sticker. <laughs> Usually I feel that sticker, but uh, anyways, once he drops off that car, he's coming to pick up this one. Guys, they're taking the I-3. There she goes. Oh, buddy. That's all she wrote, guys. That's all she wrote. <laughs> oh, no, man. Come on, dude. Oh. It could have been much more. So guys, we are officially back home. We got both the M3s trolling like villains right here. Um, the i3 did hit Copart. It's gonna take them like a couple days because they do need to take pictures of the listing, um, test that if it runs and drives and do all the little things before they actually put the listing on uh, you know, Copart. But I guess we're gonna be sitting together and seeing how much money we can actually get out of this i3. Um, honestly, if I just get my money back out of it, I'll be super happy. I have a feeling that I'm actually gonna be losing a little bit of money, but it's all good. You win some, you lose some. End of the day, I did keep this i3S bumper from that car and we actually kept the uh, the lights from it as well, the little fog lights, because I might be still getting another i3 like from a dealership, putting like two or three thousand dollars down, just getting one. Because honestly, a lot of you guys don't want to see the rebuild. A lot of you guys want to see me build that car, and I'd rather have that car kind of on the side. I do love the car, and I want to have it as a daily. So I do want to pick one up eventually. I don't know if it's going to be anytime soon, but if I can get that as a daily, as a side project, the money that we get from this i3, we can actually pick up another project. And I think you guys are going to like this new project that I have in mind way better. Trust me, it is no longer are going to be an electric project. We are looking somewhere in the ballpark of uh, on this side of the grass. Anyway, that's going to have to conclude this video. If you guys like this different kind of style video and you guys like to see more informative videos on how to actually bid on cars and how to take cars to Copart and all that stuff, make sure to smash like button. This is my first time going at it. It's my first time doing it. I figured I might as well show you guys how to do it just in case you guys have to ever go through this. But yeah, if you guys want to see what it's like to actually go through Copart and actually buy a car without a dealer's license, let me know down below because there is a way to get cars without broker licenses in California or anywhere. So um, there is a way and a safe way to do it. So uh, yeah, I can show you guys. I just just smash that like button. Without further ado, guys, I love y'all so much. Remember to stay humble. I'll see y'all on the next one. Peace out.